It was difficult at first to be in the courtroom. When I first saw Ashley walking in, it was kind of a shock because I had never, I hadn't seen her since before she killed my dad. Um, after a little bit, though, it just uh, sadness turned into anger. So the yeah, the later the day went on, it you know I just kind of wanted to see justice. It's um, angering to say the least, just because I do know that they're not true and I know that she is lying. Um, but I do think that a lot of people hopefully including the judge will see that she's lying. I have a hard time vocalizing my feelings and so I was really able to do that with ease with him. So I miss I miss having someone that I could call and and kind of and talk to and talk through different things and this being the most difficult thing I've ever gone through. I wish I had him here right now, but got to go through it to help him. What do you want the world to know about him? Um, how caring he was and how giving he was. He was so gentle and so loving and, and uh, he would give you his last shirt off of his back if, if you needed it and um, you know it's just it saddens me to think about him helpless and that's why I'm here to help him now. I don't really know what, why you know I think that my dad did he really wanted to help Ashley and that's why he stuck with her so long there was even times where he questioned it in privately with me and I said no I think you need to see it through and I, I regret saying that now, but I think that everyone told him at one point you need to leave her. And he heard it and acknowledged it, but he was just so determined to help her. And that's one of the reasons. And I also think that she wasn't doing him any justice by, by egging him on the entire time. She was lying, say that she wanted to reconcile, that she wanted to see their marriage and, and flourish and then be a happy happy couple raising their kid together and and moving and then she would say that to him and then go and file another another accusation in court and so she kept repeatedly doing that and and those are the two reasons I think that this this is the outcome have you ever been able to meet your half sister I did twice yeah can you tell us anything about her um I was she was three when I met her so I didn't really get to get to speak to her and know her it was very brief, briefly and then I also when I met her Ashley had pulled me aside both times and told me that my dad tried to kill my mom and he was out to kill us all so it kind of dampered the mood when I was meeting her I can kind of tell that she's fearful because I know that she's lying and I'm not scared to share the truth and it really makes me angry to hear those things because she accused my dad of killing my mom I was the one that found her Ashley knew that and she tried to create a relationship with me in the beginning saying that she knew what it was like to grow up without a parent so the fact that she's now making me grow up without both parents and then she's also taking away her own daughter's father it's just kind of up. I had to leave the courtroom because I saw pictures of my dad's autopsy and I, I think it just really in my brain solidified that he's actually gone and um, it, the, the pictures that I saw of him on the screen were a little dehumanizing. It, for, it was just a body and it wasn't my dad and to see him in that state when the biggest trigger for me is thinking about him um, lying there helpless bleeding out while Ashley's just standing around doing absolutely nothing. Um, and then her lying about why she shot him in the first place. All of those things combined just hits home with me. I think there was a, not really a whole lot of evidence I knew in the beginning that pointed towards first degree, but after hearing there was multiple loaded guns throughout the house, it kind of t points towards premeditation in my mind. Long term, I hope that, well, she goes to jail. That's my first hope. My second hope is that I can take something from this and turn it into something positive, whether it be helping other people going through similar, similar situations or maybe working with a foundation that helps both men and women in domestic violence situations because she claims that she was abused. She made it harder for actual women who are actually being abused to get help. And then she's also making it harder for men to be able to speak out if they're being manipulated. I think it's a little scary. I think that she's capable of killing more people if she's capable of killing one and having no remorse. I follow you on TikTok. <laughs> um, how has that kind of platform kind of helped you tell the story? Um, it's helped me joke about it. I have like a weird way of, of, of making dark humor jokes and I think that it helps other people know that it's okay to make light of situations even if they're really tough and I think that it also helps other people get through their tough situations um, and you know I I just like helping people and so the fact that I get to spread my message and and hopefully help a few other people feel okay is really really nice to know I really don't know I just know that I gotta do it no one else will if, if, if it's not this then it's just crying about it and I'm 
not someone to wallow. So being proactive is probably the best and the healthiest way for me to kind of process everything that's happened.